All right, so welcome this morning to Scrapbook Live. It is June 4th. I am Megan Jacks, and we have a fun project to put together. It's from the Creative Memories blog. This one's going back a couple of years, um, and we're going to be doing a layout from January of 2020. It featured the genuine collection, but I'm going to be using it today with Happy Hauntings. I had some photos. Uh, this is just a single page layout. Um, it has a couple photos in the sample, but um, I'm going to be trying to expand it to three. We're going to see how that works because it will impact um, some of the visual aspects of what you can see in the um, layout itself. But the handout you're going to want to grab, if you're watching this live on Facebook, you can get uh, the link is in the first comment. If you're watching this later on YouTube, it will be in the description below. So, um, oops, sorry. I guess I said June 4th. It's June 14th. Um, we are 10 days further into June. It's June 14th, 2023. So that's where we are. So if you're heading, um, yeah. It's, that's just today. So um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over here to my overhead camera and we'll take a look at what I've got going on. All right. So I've got my hand out here. Um, there's one little note um, I see in the directions. It's not a, a, a very um, significant thing. Um, step five, where they talk about cutting the brown piece of paper, they say to cut it all the way to 12 inches, but this... Um, this area you see here is actually shrunken down to 11 and a quarter inches. So that would be your brown piece back there would be only 11 and a quarter. That was the only um, correction that I found on here. Of course, if we adapt sizes, we would change everything around. But if you're, if you have that handout in front of you, step five, where it says 12 by two, it should be 11 and one quarter inch. And um, so for my layout, I'm going to be sticking fairly close to their, um, their thing. The only thing I'm going to be doing is I have three photos I would like to try to use. You can see here in the sample that, um, they have one of the photos, they have two four by six photos and one of the photos really overlaps the other. Um, I mean, there could be a whole third child sitting over here on the other edge of the tent and you can't even see the child. So, um, sometimes it works out well that you have a photo like that, that they can overlap well. My photos, here are the three photos. It was part of math grade at the elementary school where it's a math night, but they can come dressed up in a costume. And so you can see here, I've got some ability to overlap. So my thought is I wanna include him. He was like, he's wearing a ghillie suit, um, but we kind of just called him Swamp Thing because the ghillie suit with the whole like, just, I don't know, trying to make it seem less, less potentially violent. So we called him just Swamp Thing and, um, or Moss Man that also works up here in the Pacific Northwest. So I have a couple of photos uh, or three photos I would like to get on here if I can, but we'll see once we start tucking things in how much space we have. In all reality, what I really love about this layout is this torn effect down here. So I'm okay tucking those three photos. And I think I just really like that torn effect. Um, I love the genuine collection, but I think that this will work well with the happy hauntings. Okay, so there's my photos. They're all just four by sixes. The photos that are included here are four by sixes. You would wanna have the ability to have a little bit of overlap, but you can adjust as needed. So what I'm gonna be doing here is I've got the Happy Hauntings collection. I need the background pages. So it's really hard to tell here, but they do use one a, um, they do use this kind of beigey background. It kind of blends into my white background, but there is a base paper to this where you see the stickers and the green paper that is actually trimmed in. So I need a background paper. My background paper is going to be the polka dots. Now I need a page, a paper to put on top of that where they show the, the kind of the lighter green color. And I'm actually going to use this stripes. So the green, the polka dot paper was actually out of the Happy Hauntings um, Shades of the Season paper pack, but I'm going to be using the stripes as my background paper. And here you can see it actually has a nice contrast between them. Um, the stripes and the polka dots. I don't think I would ever really use the polka dots as a background. It's pretty loud um, and pretty contrasty, but I think as, a, as an accent along that back edge, it works really nice. So what I'll do is I actually will come in, I will cut out the center. I don't need that full piece. I'm gonna cut it out, make a frame, trim this piece down to that 11 and a quarter, and that'll sit on top. 
And then I need to have, they use stickers for the top and the bottom. I went ahead and trimmed some of the um, paper. It's actually the uh, same piece of paper that makes my stripes here. You can see the opposite side to this is this, um, the moons. But I wasn't, um, I trimmed these to, I think I trimmed them to just a little more than half an inch. Let me see. Nope, I trimmed them right at half an inch. So these are half inch strips. One will sit at the top, one will sit at the bottom. I'm gonna have my uh, paper in there and then I've got some other things in going. So what I'm gonna do now is I wanna get us to this point on here. So I'm gonna go start cutting the papers. So this paper here is my background paper and I'm gonna go ahead and trim it down to, or I'm gonna trim out the middle of it. I think if I trim, I have a three quarters of an inch overall. So if I trim at an inch and a half, that's, and I'm not gonna do just one inch. I probably could do one inch, but I'll do an inch and a half. So I'm gonna come in here, line up my paper at that inch and a half. We're cutting out that inside frame. If you wanna use the, um, the binder clips, I have some here. I'll go ahead and just set my binder clips because I'm gonna make four of the same cut. So I'm gonna go over here. I have this white, we haven't done this in a little while, so I'll just explain it again. Here's the white line. That tells me where my blade starts and stops, right there. So I'm gonna line up that white line at one and one half inch. And then I'm gonna set my binder clip to the right of that. So now my blade will always stop at that one and a half inch. Then the opposite side, I'm gonna grab my other binder clip. I'm gonna come down here to 10 and a half inches and set my binder clip to the left of that. Now, I just make sure that the top edge of my paper here, the outside edge is set to one and a half inches. And I'm just gonna cut from binder clip to binder clip and rotate. So it takes just a little bit of time to set those binder clips. But once you do that, you don't even have to think about your cuts. You just make sure you set that outside edge to that inch and a half. And one more cut. So see how quick all four of those cuts are. You don't even have to think about them. I can actually talk and cut at the same time. All right, so my piece should come out. Sometimes you'll have just a little bit in that corner. You can use some scissors. Sometimes your binder clips aren't set exactly. They're close enough, or maybe you didn't get even pressure all the way along. There we go. This piece here, it's just tonal black on the other side. I can save it for another project. But here's my background, my base. And then I will cut this piece to that 11 and a quarter. So 11 and one quarter inch. So I should be cutting off about three quarters of an inch, remove my binder clips. Those are not gonna be helpful at this point. So there is that. And we'll come over to this one, 11 and a quarter. And then this should fit on there. And you can see how nicely, you can still see those polka dots. So even though they're the same colors, it's just a difference enough in the pattern that we have a really nice contrast between the outside and the inside edge. So let me go ahead and adhere these pieces in place. Grab my cutting mat up here. I'm just gonna come around the edge. I have a nice amount of overlap. I probably could have cut that at a one inch and given myself that 10 inch 
square piece left over. But this just makes it easy. Got lots of room to apply that adhesive. The reason I'm taking the time to line up my square on here is because what I'm gonna do is I apply this piece on, I'm gonna be paying attention to my corners. These lines, you see here, see if this will, you come up, like those, that piece right there, those lines, I'm gonna be lining up my corners and that's gonna help me see that I am equal all the way around. So I'm looking to see that my corners come right to this corner here. And that's gonna make sure that I get everything centered on here evenly. But you gotta make sure that that background piece is also on your cutting mat straight. All right, I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now let's start to layer things. So we're gonna go ahead and add our top and bottom borders, but you can see here, I need to trim these down. These need to be 11 and three quarters inch as well. They started off at 12 inch. We're gonna take them down to that, excuse me, 11 and one quarter inch. 11 and a quarter. I have two of those. I cut these to half an inch. You might wanna use a border element. Maybe you'll punch a border. You've got some room here if you need to, if you wanna use a border maker cartridge. Um, these stickers may have been half inch, three quarters of an inch. I can't remember in that collection what size they are. I don't think I have them anymore. I think they were pretty chunky though. Um, so you might wanna punch a border to go across the top and the bottom. They can be two different ones. I'm using the same, just strips of paper. And I'll apply these. Just a little bit of adhesive all the way across. And one's gonna go at the bottom and one will go at the top. I really don't have a top and a bottom to this layout at the moment. Everything was not so directional. I just wanted to make sure that my stripes were vertical. All right, so there we've got all that fun going. All right, so next step, the next step in step four is where it wants us to use the, um, we, it wants us to attach what they, the wood grain piece that they have at the bottom and that they have cut to 11 and three quarter, or excuse me, 11 and one quarter by um, three inches tall. So this for me was a little bit of playing around um, deciding what I wanted to do here. I did decide I wanted to use the ghosts as my border element, partially because the ghosts really, um, when I punch them, it popped off the page. It's, it makes it, um, the, the punch itself, even with all the patterns I've got going on is easily identifiable. I wanted to make sure that whatever I put where they show the timeless tweed border punch, I wanted to make sure we could easily identify what that punch is. So um, I think I'm gonna go where they show the brown. I'm gonna use this tonal strip of, it's kind of the um, pumpkin orange with a little golden dots on it. It's from the Shades of Happy Hauntings paper. And then where they use the wood grain, I'm actually gonna use this purple color. Again, this is from the Shades of the Season pack. The opposite side to that is, um, it looks kind of like the corkboard craft paper, but it's a little bit of a more golden yellow color. And so what's going to be nice is when I pull this down, when I tear it and I pull it down, you're going to see that really nice pop of golden yellow. And that's really what I like. So I wanted to find a paper that when I put, when I tore it and I folded the pieces down that I liked the way that looks. I really, this piece of paper, I needed to make sure both sides would work really well with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and um, cut this piece here. I've got a little bit of extra um, to work with. I don't know if I've got a full six inches though. Let me see if I've got a full six inches, which is going to dictate how much I can mess up. Yes, I've got more than six inches. So if I cut it 
and I mess up, it's okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do though. I think what I'm going to do is I am going to tear it first and then cut it at three inches. That way, if for some reason I feel like I mess up that tear, I can just cut off at the tear and try again. I probably should have practiced this before I do it live on camera, but you know, it's fun. So the biggest thing I need to do is I need to consider what is the middle of my layout. And it's not really here in the middle. It's a little off to the side. So um, I probably will make mine in the middle. You can see here, they have the tear at the opening, what feels like the middle of the photos, but the photos are slightly off to the left. So the tear is slightly off to the left. We have a little bit more over here on the right than we do the left, but my photos, I'm going to be using three, which will be a little bit more centered on my layout. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to plan. I'm just going to tear in the middle of my paper. Um, and then I can trim off the edges to get to that um, 11 and a quarter. So I'm going to fold my paper in half and I'm just going to pinch. And all I'm trying to do is establish where the middle is. So I've got my pinch right there and I'm going to just tear straight down. And then I'm going to just fold it back. And it's kind of a rough fold. You can kind of see, maybe fold it a little bit and then fold it some more. Looks like there was maybe some additional tearing going on. You just want it to look kind of worn, almost like you really, you messed up a couple times and you're really finagling with it. You kind of want that look. It's got a little bit of a rustic. Now, if you want it to be a really uniform look, you could have used a pair of scissors to cut this and you could just really come in with a nice crisp fold. I don't mind the kind of the rumpled look. Almost looks like somebody, you know, ripped open the page. They could see more of the photos. So I think that's going to work well. And I can play with it a little bit more once I get everything in here. I think that's going to work really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and cut this at three inches from that top edge, three inches from the top. And I need to make this now um, 11 and a quarter inch. So that is, I'm taking off three quarters of an inch, which is um, three quarters of an inch is, oh, I'm trying to think that's six eighths. So half of six eighths is three eighths. Does that sound right? I need to take off three eighths of an inch from each side, which is just shy of a half an inch. I'm going to cut from the bottom side because the bottom side is level or is straight still. It doesn't have that tear. Three I'm just going to double check here. I don't want to cut it too short. So yeah, I should be able to take that three eighths, three eighths of an inch off of each side. And that should get me centered on my page. I'm a little over. I'm a little, um, I can cut off just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so this is gonna sit at the very bottom. It goes right flush at the bottom. When, we, you, when you're building this, you build it from the bottom up. Now I need to go ahead and cut this piece of paper here. And I'm gonna just imagine it in here. They want me to cut it at two inches. I kind of envision that. And then I'd have my photos would be kind of sticking in here. Now remember, I need to, um, I, I still have to map my photos. So it's gonna look something along those lines. Now, truthfully, I can't see a whole lot of my, um, I can't really see so much of my, my ghosts anymore. They kind of are hidden behind my photos. So this is where I have some flexibility now. Let's thinking about where do I, how much do I want those ghosts to be in here? I've got some space at the top. 
Um, I will have mats on my photos. I'm probably a little, I don't have as much room at the bottom as they did. I bet these, these pieces at the bottom are a little bit bigger. I could cut wider pieces of those if I wanted to, but maybe what I'll do is I'm just going to stick my little, my little dudes at the top. They look super cute out up there. And then I do have, I made a little title. I went ahead and already did my title. I combined the, um, I wanted to highlight that it says math grade. So I did math in the classic, uh, the sans or the serif font, and then use the script to write, um, the curate. And just so you know, I ran out of ease. I did have to piece them together. It's a C with the comma is a great way to get some additional ease out of the script. You have to finagle the comma just a little bit, but you can get that to finish out that um, swoop of the E. And this will sit in here, maybe something like this. I've got a pretty chunky, I could also do that at the top if I wanted to come in. I'm actually thinking what I need to do as I think I'm going to come in, I need to cut these just a little bit bigger. I did half an inch and I really think I need to do those closer to, um, three quarters of an inch to give myself a little bit more space. I just, so I'm going to cut those a little bit bigger. I want some, I want a little bit more space. I'm going to do the three quarters of an inch. I've got the extra paper. And maybe I'll just change the bottom one to be three quarters of an inch. Space it out here and see what I think. Now, when I put that math grade in there, it's got a little bit more spacing. I think that's going to look okay if I have, I mean, let's imagine, imagine it at the top also with that changed. If I change that, this is the drop my ghost down a little bit, but I still need to mat these. What do you guys think? Should I just, I think I'm going to leave it a little bit smaller at the top and do it a little bit longer at the bottom. Probably what the other option I could have done is I could have, instead of doing this at three inches, I could have done this at a, a little bit smaller. So I see a quick question about the math grade. Um, I use the stickers, the Creative Memories ABC123 stickers, and it's the uh, serif font is the, the serif stickers are the math or the classic serif. And then I use the script um, font stickers for the bottom. Uh, the black ones are actually the ones that did recently sell out. They, um, and I asked creative memories about them and they said that just because, um, the script font is one of their least selling fonts that they were just going to probably as those, um, colors sell through. So the Brown and the white will probably also, I'm guessing will not be reordered from creative memory. So, um, if you really like the script font, the good thing to know, um, is you can get the digital files for this font, um, out of the digital collections that creative memories has. So if you really want to, you could cut them on. If you have like a cricket or a silhouette, you can cut those. I will probably try it and see, cause I honestly, I really do like this script font. Um, it's nice. It's read, um, legible to, to it matches with stuff. So, um, that's probably what I'll do here. So the torn pieces, I can probably adjust a little bit, bring them up a little bit higher if I feel I need some more space, but I am going to put this larger piece at the bottom. What I'll do here is cut off. I'll cut it to that 11 and a quarter inch. And then I'll come in, grab my multi-purpose tool and just see about lifting this and just carefully pulling it off. I did use regular adhesive, but there's a little bit of flexibility in pulling that off just carefully. I am leaving um, some marks behind where I am pulling up the ink, but I'm covering it up with a new piece. So that's not a problem at all. Let's have a little bit chunkier bit of moon phases of the moon. Then I'll come in here. I am only adhering the bottom for now. I 
need to trim my phases of the moon is just a little bit bigger. Didn't get it quite cut at that 11 and a quarter. So here is that, we'll leave that at the top. I am gonna go ahead and put my, um, my ghosts on. Let's see here, they're gonna have to, I want them to be kind of centered, looking for my repo adhesive. So I'm gonna let them overhang a little bit and then I will trim with my scissors. I probably could have built my 11 and a quarter inch square and then attached it to my frame. That probably would have been easier because then I can easily just come in, I can lift and trim with scissors. And the reason I'm doing it that way is I want it to be even as much as possible. I'm not quite as even as I should have been. I don't want to have a full ghost over here and then half a ghost over there. I'd like to have two partials. It just looks a little bit more even across the top. There we go. Now I need to have a, this piece will need to come in here and I need to decide, they want us just to cut it at two inches. And I'm not sure that two inches is gonna get me fully down into this dip. I probably don't need to worry about that because I'm gonna have photos covering that up. I think I'm gonna cut it at two and a half inches. I would rather have it fully cover up the dip just in case when I'm arranging my photos that I have a gap. So two and a half inches instead of two, I'm making that adjustment. That would be on step five. I mentioned earlier, they want you to cut it to 12 by two. It actually needs to be 11 and one quarter. So I need to trim off three quarters of an inch. And I cut mine to two and a half rather than two. So this should just slide right down in there. That looks good. I am gonna get out my T-square to help me make sure that this piece is straight. I wanna make sure that I've got this lined up nice and straight. So I'm gonna come down. It looks like I'm right. Let's see here. Looks like I put it at five and three quarter, the top at five and three quarters. Then I'll just use my T-square to make sure I get everything lined up good. Oops, I'm a little, I can still see a little bit of a gap. Come down one more eighth of an inch. And I need to trim this side over here a little bit. I can see it peeking out behind my paper there. I would definitely recommend, if I was gonna start this over, I would have built everything on this 11 and 3 quarter inch piece and then put it back on my frame because then you can just slice everything on the sides. Okay, now it's time to do my photos. Now my photos, I was going to, I was debating on the, the color of the, um, what I was gonna use for my uh, mats. There was no mats for this particular layout or for this particular collection. In the Genuine collection, they just had you use some uh, of the variety mats, but there are no mats in this collection. So now I need to figure out what I'm gonna do. 
So I have pulled a couple of different options. I've got some orange shimmer paper, which I think might just be a little too bright for this. Maybe not, they might work out okay. I could come in with, I've got some gold paper. I'm a little concerned though that the gold is gonna conflict down here with this, this paper. I've also got just this kind of a darker tonal color out of the, I went with oranges as you can tell. I kind of was just choosing oranges, but now I'm actually thinking, um, I don't know, maybe let me grab, I'm gonna grab a sheet. Well, when in doubt, grab your swatches. So I was thinking maybe I could use eggplant, but I think eggplant's the wrong color. I could come in and just use some white. I could just, which actually might work really well, but then I have a lot of white up here at the top with my ghosts. I don't know whether black would pop them enough. No, black definitely does not. The other option, and this is because I am a sucker for green, I could come in, I don't know if I have a piece of green shimmer in here, or the parakeet shimmer, I don't think I do, but I could come in with some green. There is green, obviously my son is wearing green, I think I might do that. What do you guys think of, I, I add some green in there. Let me grab, I would love to do parakeet shimmer, but I'm not a hundred percent sure I have a pack opened. I'm looking, and then the question comes into whether or not, hey, there it is. I think I'm gonna do parakeet shimmer. It will go really nicely with my son's swamp theme thing of his, the Swamp Thing theme. I think that's gonna be a nice addition, green. Yep. All right, so let me go ahead. I'm gonna trim some mats. I'm gonna trim mats, that I have four by sixes. So I am going to trim mats that are, um, they use the four and a half by six and a half. We'll go ahead and do that. I'll do four and a half by six and a half. We're gonna do the magic mat concept or when you can do multiple mats. So let me just quickly remind myself of how I get that going. It involves math. I need to do, so four and a half plus six and a half is 11. So I'm gonna cut one inch off to get myself down to 11 inch square. I need to get myself down to an 11 inch square. I'm gonna make four mats that are four and a half by six and a half. I only need three of them, but this is just a, a quick way to do it. Okay, so I have an 11 by 11 inch square. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull my paper here and I'm gonna put my paper up at four and a half inches. I'm gonna use a binder clip again. I'm gonna move my piece here over to six and a half inches. And I'm gonna set my binder clip on the left side of it. Okay, so I have my piece set up here at six and a half. My binder clip is set at four and a half. Those are the two dimensions of my mat. I want a six and a half inch wide mat by four and a half inches tall. I've got an overall 11 by 11 inch square. So this six and a half, mat right here will be partnered with a four and a half inch wide mat that starts here and comes down. So this first cut I've, at six and a half, cut to the right, rotate, line it back up at four and a half. I've already got my mat, my binder clip cut set. And I'll cut and I'm gonna keep rotating around and I should come away with four mats that are four and a half by six and a half. And a tiny little square. I don't need these two pieces, but I do want these three mats.
Now, the question is, is whether or not these are going to be too chunky. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping I can get everything to work. This needs to be on this side over here. I need to leave a little bit of space here. I want to be able to show what he was working on. He was doing kind of one of these fun little, um, you know, user rubber bands to make the different shapes. I am going to be bleeding off the page because remember, I'm trying to get three photos on here, right? So it might be, um, I'm going to have to bleed off to the page, off the outer, that quarter inch. And he was throwing some darts or throwing, he was trying to throw candy into the piece. So I am taking up a lot of space with my photos, but I think that works out okay. I lucked out with my photos that I am able to overlap in the middle here. I've got a lot of dead space on the inside of these two outside photos. This photo here, if I want to bring it down a little bit, I can. I'll adhere, I'll get these pieces adhered on. And then I have my masquerade. Figure out how that's gonna go. Maybe I'll just go in the middle. And then I've got, um, or I can come off to the side. I probably will do that. The reason I'll do that is because you can see here Then when these flaps dip down, they're in the lower section of this title as compared to over here where they're kind of interrupting math. And then I can have, if I want to put a little bit of journaling over here. So I'll put everything into place. I will need to adhere these flaps down once I have my photos in there. But you can guys, you guys can see how that came together. So I really liked how he moved the ghosts up to the top. Just let's those still um, have fun on the layout. They would have been completely missing from the back side here. And because you can hardly even tell that I've got that orange back there. And that's just because I used... Um, uh, three photos. If I had taken these photos down, maybe instead of having four by sixes, I could have either cropped to, um, 11. Um, I could have cropped them down to three by three and a half by fives. I could have printed them smaller. Um, I could probably crop this middle photo a little bit smaller and let everything else come in. But for the most part, I'm happy with how it is. I don't mind the photos taking up a good portion of the page. I think it's fine. So I do see a question in there about the mats, the magic mats. I've heard them, you know, refer to various different ways of cutting, getting those formats out of a piece of paper. So let me grab another piece of cardstock and I'm going to lay it out for you guys so you can see. Um, we'll grab just another piece of paper here that I can cut up for you. I'll do it on some white paper and let me draw it out for you first so you guys can see what we're doing we'll show you why the math works sometimes while we're cutting it up it's really hard to see so here we have just um, a 12 by 12 piece of paper that's what you're going to want to start with and a 12 by 12 piece of paper we need to crop it down we need to get um to get it down to the square that equals the size when we take our mats so if i want a mat let me do this. If I want a mat that is four and a half, oops, by six and a half, I need to add these two numbers together and that's going to give me the size of my square. So four and a half and six and a half equals 11 inches. So I would start with an 11 inch square, right? Now, if I wanted, say I just want some four by six mats. Well, four by six doesn't work because you can cut them in any way. I mean, you can cut them out of this various other ways. Say so you want a five by seven mat. You want a really chunky mat, right? So you have five by seven. I can just keep my 12 inch mat, my 12 inch square. I don't have to do any changes to it. But I'm gonna go for this four and a half by six and a half inch mat. So I'm gonna cut off one inch from both sides, right? I'm gonna cut this down and give myself that 11 inch square. And what my goal then is I am going to cut a line here and that's six and a half inches. This would be four and a half inches. Then the next cut I'm gonna do, cause I'll rotate my paper, I'm gonna cut here. Again, this is six and a half. This is four and a half. 
width. Then I rotate my paper again. I make another horizontal line or cut at six and a half. I have that four and a half. And I'll, I'll cut this for you to show you. Rotate one more time. You make one last cut. And there you can see the six and a half by four and a half. So that's how you basically do that configuration. And that's what you're doing. All right. Okay. So now let me cut this for you and show you how that works. If you have a binder clip, that can be really helpful. You don't have to have a binder clip, but I need to cut off one inch. So I'm going to bring this over to one inch. I'm making that 11 inch square. So I'm cutting off an inch or maybe what you'll want to do is you want to just double check that you're cutting truly to 11 by 11, bring out your arm, line this up over there and cut. So you have an 11 inch square. Next, I'm going to show you with the binder clip because I think it can be helpful. When I line my paper up in here, I'm going to line this up at four and a half inches on the outside edge, four and a half inches from my cut line. So four and a half. That means I need to make a six and a half inch cut here. I'm going to line up that white piece right here at six and a half. Binder clip is going to come to the left side. There we go. Now I can go ahead and make those cuts. I cut here all the way over, pick it up, rotate, always setting it at four and a half. The reason you can remember that, I don't need to put my arm out. I don't need to come up here to six and a half. I'm gonna keep it on my trimming bed at four and a half inches. I've got my binder clip. I can just cut to my binder clip. My first mat comes away, rotate around, come over here again to four and a half inches and cut. We're going to see how good my random marks were. Not too bad. I mean, that's definitely not a square with the way I drew it. Then you have one last one to do. You only have to make three cuts, set it to four and a half inches and cut one last time. Now you have four, six and a half by four and a half inch mats and that little tiny square. So just remember, if you're trying to figure it out, maybe you don't like this, the chunky four and a half by six and a half inch mat. If you want four and a quarter, if you want a four and a quarter inch, oh my goodness, four and a quarter inch by six and a quarter inch mats, which gives you an eighth of an inch all the way around your, um, uh, your, um, your photo. So it's a little bit of a thinner mat you need to add these together. So I've got 10 and adding two quarters is a half. So I need a 10 and a half inch square. And then I need to adjust my measurements to do that. I would only come out here to four and a quarter. Remember that's my mat. I want to come out here to four and a quarter. I would adjust my cutting to six and a quarter, not to six and a half. I'm going to come to six and a quarter and then I would cut. Okay. All right. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Um, you enjoy watching that. Yeah. There's, there's other videos out there that if you want to see how it can be done, um, it is a great, um, easy way to get those formats out of a single sheet of paper. So, um, hopefully you guys will have a chance to give that a try next time you do it. Sometimes I don't always use this, uh, method. Um, sometimes I don't need four mats of the same color. So sometimes I'll just cut them just from mats or scraps of paper. I just happen to have, um, starting with that 12 by 12 of the parakeet and I knew I needed at least three. So that was going to be the easiest way to do it, um, for this particular thing. Then those scraps of paper, something like this just becomes, I use this a couple of different ways. I'll save it for, it goes into my scrap pile. Obviously I can punch with it, um, different punches. I can also put it over with my die cut machine that I do my letter dies with. So I have one, I have a old cuddle bug. So it just, I put my letters on top and just shove it through the machine and it gives me parakeet shimmer. 
letters. So that's an idea to do there too. So those papers always get used. So thanks you guys so much for joining me. I'm going to finish putting this layout together. Just have, have some adhesive to do and um, some other uh, little embellishments. I may find some other ways to bring in that, uh, that green parakeet shimmer in there. And yeah, I almost forgot. Tammy just reminded me. I've got a secret box to open. So it was nice seeing you guys all today, but I'm going to go. No, really, you guys uh, have fun. If you do, I don't know what the secret box status right now is, but if you are thinking about it, you might want to jump on that. I know many of you have already. Thank you so much for those of you who have ordered um, from my uh, shop link on Creative Memories. I definitely appreciate all that support. And uh, make sure you're shopping with an advisor when you are shopping on Creative Memories. Um, you're more than welcome to shop with me or shop with um, whomever. But just, it's always fun as an advisor to get those emails that you've got in order. So I appreciate those. Um, everybody have a wonderful rest of the week. I will be back next week with Crapbook Live. Um, I don't know what project we're going to do yet, but it's the last one for June. Um, and then we will be going to an every other week um, schedule for the rest of the summer. Okay. Take care, everybody. I will talk to you all soon. Um, enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks for watching.